Hello everyone, this is Fahim Jackson, and this is episode 77 of my podcast show, In the Know. This podcast is aimed at trying to guide people through the world with a variety of topics. I am using this platform to ask questions and try my best to answer these questions with my viewpoints of the world around me. The following is an introduction speech into the topic of today, and that introduction speech is regarding where religion actually comes from. Have you ever asked yourself the question regarding how religion came about? I know that people in the past have always aimed at trying to understand their existence. And in a way of doing this was to try to connect to something higher than ourselves. Because the more understanding of who we are took hold over time, we asked about our lives. Why am I here? How did I get here? And then phenomenon took place we couldn't explain. This is how the first pieces of religion came about. We would ask for something important in our lives, and it would formulate. This is when gods and goddesses arise. We look to the sun, and this god took on a name and a purpose. The wind god served as a purpose as well, along with the god of fire and water. The more time progressed, our views took on more humane characteristics. We went from wind and water to names of people, meaning the eye of Ra to the God by way of the prophet Muhammad. So now what? Where did religion come from? What is it? Religion in itself is the belief that something greater than ourselves a superhuman power, to be exact, is controlling everything on earth and in our universe. The divine being that sees all and knows all, which is represented by a God that is watching over the masses and making decisions according to that, purpose, that person's faith base. This is a social-cultural system of beliefs designed to take on practices, morals, ethics, behaviors, prophecies, sanctioned places of worship, and text that relates to the supernatural and spiritual elements of life. Now, with that said, religion has so many meanings depending on the region of the world in which you reside. If you're coming from the Middle East, your religion will take on a different meaning than the United States. But the Middle East is Islamic and the United States is mostly Christian. But even in the belief of Islam, this may also be different depending on the region of the world. So even coming from the same region, when you move them from a part of the world to another, the viewpoint shift. So let's look at the very beginnings of the beliefs we hold close to ourselves. The beginnings. As the human species evolved over time, our brains expanded. <clears throat> and our base which gave rise to the philosophical viewpoints and beliefs. Casual beliefs are believed to have come about from the evolving of the mind through the use of basic tools because one had to visualize a tool before creating it. Since religion is also a system of comprehensive thoughts and symbolic communication, the need to develop a language preceded the belief. And considering humans need a reason to understand what they are seeing from through their eyes by formulating a theory as to why this is happening, there begins to be a supernatural element to understanding phenomena we don't know or understand. So once this is witnessed, people have a tendency to spread this around to many other individuals where it leads to becoming a collective religious belief. And any social viewpoint that is held as acceptable by the populace becomes the sanctioned viewpoint. Next came the group living and social morality and living in a community. Working together as a group brought the community together to gather fruits and vegetables, harvest as well as hunt for food. 
the best of the group has always been at the top as the leaders. So this means a hierarchical system for the groups or tribe. Morality could have been introduced as a means to resolve conflicts in groups as the population of people grew. Now, as it pertains to psychological adaptations, schools of thought have been held that natural selection and mental adapting gave rise to religion. Religion could have risen because the mind can come up with narratives for natural events and noticing people have minds, beliefs, and desires of their own. In the times of prehistoric religious religious spaces, you notice rituals conducted where goods were buried with the corpse. You also have the introduction of symbols and the evolution of religion because it is common for symbols to emerge for the representation of the supernatural. For example, the use of colors such as red pigment being the representation of life, blood, and even sex was used in ritualistic practices. Judaism. This is an Abrahamic religion that emerged through the 20th to 18th century as a collection of spiritual, cultural, and legal traditions of the Jewish people. There are about 13 million Jews in the world, with most in the United States and Israel. Judaism came about in the Middle East over 3,500 years ago. There is a covenant between the people and God that was made in the origins of the religion. The central most important book read by the people is the Torah. Leaders that service the people in their spirituality journey are rabbi and the places in which the people worship are synagogues. To expound on the relationship with God, Jews believe there is one God that has created the universe and whom Jews all have a personal relationship. Their belief is that people were chosen by God to lead the holy and ethical path. This is a global community connected to Jews all around the world. Ceremonies are important as they start eight days after the baby boy is circumcised as orders given to Abraham by God 4,000 years ago. There are holy days, one of which is the Sabbath. This day starts nightfall on a Friday and ends Saturday night. A commandment by God. Jews are to rest this day as to observe how God arrested after the earth's creation. This day is a reminder to keep in line with the covenant made between the people and God in an occasion to rejoice. Families come together in the presence of God to celebrate. All the chores in the house must be finished before the Sabbath, sunset on Friday. It is customary for the wife to perform these tasks. Candles are placed in a candlesticks to mark the beginning of the Sabbath. Two commandments are to be followed, the remembrance of the Sabbath the Zakar, and the observance of the Sabbath, the Shamar. There are more holy days to acknowledge in the Jewish faith, Hanukkah, Passover, and Yom Kippur. Hanukkah is the festival of lights. It represents the struggle for freedom by the people. There is the lighting of the menorah, eating traditional meals, spinning the dreidel, and giving gifts. Other cultural significant days are wed wedding rites and having a bar mitzvah. Christianity. This is the religion that is over 2 billion globally. They believe that Jesus was the Messiah, as talked about in the Old Testament. The belief is that Jesus is the Son of God. God sent his only Son to save the human soul from the consequences of their sins. Jesus gave his life on the cross of the crucifixion and rose from the dead, which was known as the resurrection. There are three elements of the Christian faith the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The believers worship in a church. The leaders of the church are priests and ministers. The book in which the people read is the Bible. The, the Bible that the believers read from also consists of the Old and the New Testament. The holy days that are recognized by the masses are Easter and Christmas. There are many beliefs with this religion, such as the Virgin Mary, who is the mother of Jesus Christ. When she died, she left the earth and moved on to heaven with her son Jesus. Another belief is that God is the only God who is the father of Jesus Christ. People who believe in the faith justify their faiths through Jesus as the son of God, the resurrection, a right away relationship with God and his forgiveness. As for Trinity, this incorporates God as father, son, 
and Holy Spirit. Don't confuse this with the idea of multiple gods. But all it means is God sent his son to earth. Through him, the work of the Holy Spirit is evident in its believers. Christians also believe in their life after death. In addition to the beliefs, I've already explained prayer and rituals have been placed in the religion for the one's personal needs. We ask for God to give his blessings, but also we pray for God to grant us forgiveness. These forms of prayer that we use go back to the New Testament when Jesus encouraged his disciples to pray and address God as Father. Let's take a look at some, something else in the faith base. Some topics that are quite divisive when pertaining to Christian ethics are abortion, same-sex marriage, capital punishment, organ donation, and war. Christianity speaks that all children have a right to live, to life, even in the case of rape and incest. For same-sex marriage, the religion put emphasis on marriage between man and woman shall be preserved. Any act between two of the same sex is indeed sin and shall not be engaged in as it is unnatural. As with capital punishment, there are talks within religion about a man taking the life of another man. He shall himself be subject to the same punishment. Organ donation is spoken highly of because it is the idea of using your life to help another sustain on earth. Now, as for the idea of war, it is seen as something that must be done with just, but most Christians don't believe war is just. Now, Christians understand that in order to sustain peace, then there must be a method to keep the world from falling into the wrong hands. And that sometimes means fighting off evil. Islam. This is the religion that, simply put, is the submission of, to the will of God. Islam is the second largest religion in the world to Christianity. The religion was revealed in the city of Mecca about 1,400 years ago. The people who follow the faith are Muslims. They called God Allah in Islam, and according to the laws of God, prophets were sent to earth to teach his people how to live their lives. Even though Jesus, Moses, and Abraham were sent to the earth as prophets by God, but Muhammad is the final prophet. The laws and the religion come from the holy book known as the Quran. Within the belief, there are five pillars of Islam. Declaration of faith, praying five times a day, giving money to the charity, fasting, and pilgrimage to Mecca. Let's take a look at the arts and cultural importance of Islam. For instance, the Islamic art you see is meant to be aesthetically pleasing that would transcend time and space. So it's difficult to tell when it was first designed. There are some essentials that make up the art. The following fall under the essentials, like not meant to explicitly religious meaning, essence over physical form, sculptures and paintings that are meant to have noble form, geometry is used in the formation of art, and lastly, the use of people are not seen in religious art. So the overall meaning of the art is supposed to be spiritual by using objects to tell the story of the faith base. And another aspect of the arts and culture of Islam is the architecture. Some of the features of architecture is a house built around a courtyard with walls and no windows to the street, which gives protection from the outside world. Let's observe some articles of the faith such as the main beliefs. These are the monotheistic belief in one God who is Allah. There are angels and that the holy book of Quran is life. The belief that judgment day will eventually be upon us and a predeterminism is not something that stops Muslims from achieving. Allah is the supreme and unique God who created all rules and laws. The more we look into the faith base, the belief is more pronounced. And then there's jihad. It's one which means an eternal struggle, something that is more than just a holy war. Three kinds of struggles are living the faith as much as possible, building a good Muslim community, and the willingness to defend Islam, even if force is necessary. Now, let's expound upon the internal struggle in Islam. This points to living the life as a Muslim, as much in alignment with the faith as possible. Also, 
as a form of jihad in practicing the five pillars of Islam. This means know the Quran by heart, overcoming greater forces like anger and malice, letting go of smoking, cleaning the mosque, working for social justice, engaging with the Muslim community, and forgiveness. Now, as far as the holy war aspects of Islam, you are only supposed to wage war when threatened. Justification of war include self-defense, strengthening the religion, protecting Muslim freedoms, protecting against oppression, and punishing the enemy for breaking an oath. The other rules include what you're not supposed to do in Islam. This is forcing conversion to Islam, conquering for colonization, taking territories for economic gain, and demonstrate leadership powers. Another cultural aspect of Islam is the idea of polygamy, which is the marriage of multiple individuals. And in Islam, this means generally men taking on more than one wife. There are rules to this, though. You have to treat each wife equally. It all results in the inability to marry more if you can't afford it. And with the woman comes something else that is prevalent, and that is the hijab. The hijab means the barrier of partition, where you are to dress modestly, both men and women. But it relates more to the women who wear head wraps. Yet it is more than just the head wrap. The hijab is not obligatory in front of fathers, brothers, grandfathers, uncles, and grandchildren. It does not need to be worn around other women as well. Some women even cover every aspect of their body with only their eyes exposed. When breaking down the ethics of the culture, there are a variety of views on social issues. These topics are abortion, capital punishment, contraception, and war. Starting with abortion, Muslims believe abortion is wrong and forbidden. The only way it's permitted is if the mother's life is in jeopardy. But the more along the pregnancy, the more wrong. Rape has been a situation to handle the matter, but some believe against even in this these cases. When it comes to capital punishment, this method of punishment is acceptable. There are even public forms of execution to handle suspected criminals. Some places that follow Sharia law strictly enact this punishment for rapists, homosexuality, adultery, piracy, terrorism, and treason. As for contraception, Children are regarded as a gift from God, so no contraception is needed because marriage should be in existence, so no sex before marriage. Even the use of condoms are not seen as necessary, so a population boom could potentially take hold, which means there needs to be a lot of population planning. Now, as for war, it is permitted in self-defense. When another nation has attacked Muslims, and if oppression is affecting the people, in order to also have war, there must be disciplined measures, such as without anger, humane treatment of POWs, and minimum necessary forces. In the mind. The human brain is a very complex organ. So since the beginning of time, people have been trying to make sense of the world around them, whether it was seeing a meteor for the first time or even natural disasters. These events make people wonder what is going on on this planet that causes these things to happen. As our ability to communicate increased, our understanding of the world took on more meanings. This is when the interjection of religious beliefs came about. We try to figure out that if things like natural disasters are taking place, something or someone may be causing this. And asking if someone has been making this happen opens up the conversation for a higher power. We have always had the smarter of our species that understood as a species and spoke to the masses. This is when the deities who sent their children to earth to save the masses came about. These men spoke and were the bricklayers for the religions we have today. Here's what I am saying. Is that how, how did religion come about? It was not in the minds of men already. It's just as the mind expanded, we took on a better understanding of the religion when it was put together. But religion observes how men and women move their society, and creates a narrative as to how we should live based on the observation. Over time, it becomes what it is, which is truth, especially when people in power or positions make the decisions for society by way of religion. 
do we need it? In a world where technology has taken over and modern medicine is helping people live longer, do we even need religion? I mean, we have figured out how to feed multitudes of people. The infrastructure is becoming easier to build as well. So how do you continue to tell the masses that someone above is controlling everything as we get smarter and smarter? And as the world becomes more socially conscious, we come closer together. This is when we start to ask why we are looking up for guidance in the world. We have more than enough help around us to keep ourselves going. The use of a higher power is not needed. Next Generation's Viewpoints In the millennial generation, we're not as religious as the prior generations. And the generation after us really don't care about religion, which is different from the generation before us and after them. The generations before had no choice but to believe because it was the way of life. Like, for example, my mother had to go to church every Sunday growing up, no questions asked. Today's young people would never know what that is about. It is all about choice to the point that a lot of churches are shutting down across the country. So what happens now? Because people have always been looking to have our faith put to some place or someone. Yes, we have people, but people are flaky, unreliable, and unpredictable. So how do you fully trust people? And here's why we think the fall will take place. This is what leads into the next section. Where is it headed? This is where the plot thickens. The failure of religion is starting to happen right before our eyes. Young people have grown tired of being told they are sinning and going to hell for their behaviors. They are tired of the hypocrisy and being critiqued on everything. Now, I think Christianity is falling here in the United States quicker than most religions around the world. Even places that are Christian outside America are holding up better than we are. Inevitably, it is heading to the end. We are watching the fight in the Middle East right now that is Israel and Palestine. You're seeing Jews and Muslims battle. This is a fight that has been going on for eons. What is going to happen to these groups of people as well? Even in other parts of the world, turmoil is taking hold. Taking hold with no intervention from a higher power. It is up to the people to stop the fighting. So why have a God? That is the question. The end statement. Why we have to understand, where did religion come from? For a better understanding as to where religion camps, comes from, we have to first observe what religion is. And from there we move forward as to what I have laid out in the beginning of the episode. See, knowing where religion comes from allows us to understand a few things. It lets us understand what people who wrote texts understood about humanity meaning the smartest of our species always were the writers and the translators, we get a chance to see the expansion of the human brain and how creating language, symbols, and customs led to the creation of religion. We also learned about the potential threat of religion ending as younger generations take on different viewpoints. You know, I've always had an intrigue with religion, even though I was never a big religious person. Maybe because it is something that so many people follow so ritually. The age and time period in which it has been around is one of intrigue as well. What will the future look like as we move toward a more technologically savvy society and less belief driven? Will we have a use for religion or could it actually become stronger? Only time will tell. So, thanks for listening to End the Know and I'll be bringing you another episode regarding religion. The next topic will be about asking the question, where does fear come from within religion?